yeah so who am i why do i care so yeah i run girls at scuba and i also um for about 18 months now have started a plastic free online shop called a waste free world um it's also a community as well and what i do at a waste free world is like spend every single day (laughs) trying to find um plastic free swaps to like everyday products um and then not even just everyday products like basically anything that we can find that you can buy plastic free or sustainable we'll try and find those swaps um so yeah it's only been 18 months but we have nearly 200 products now which are completely plastic free so i can talk more about those later on um but the reason that i started a waste free world was because in the early days of girls at scuba we would get a lot of like questions about you know i've seen like i saw loads of plastic in the ocean or you know i saw like microplastics like people started to get really interested about it and ask how they could make a difference and what swaps they can make and while I was like super interested and really happy people were talking about that I didn't want the group to be taken over by like how can we stop using plastic because it is a scuba diving group and we want to just talk about scuba diving and everything like that in there so I thought you know let's start another group that we can continue talking about like these problems but in a space where we can kind of open it up to the rest of the world as well. And it's not just female scuba divers. <laughs> so Waste Free Wild gives us the opportunity to reach a lot more people. Um, so why do I care? Because I'm a scuba diver and it's impossible for me to get into the ocean and to see the effects. I've been diving for nearly 12 years now. And like, while that's not a long time for some divers, it's definitely enough time to see difference um, and enough time to see like some of the effects that these plastics have had on the ocean. So I'm going to start with like the truth about plastic in the ocean. So many people, like probably not us a lot, think like, oh yeah, like um, let's stop um, using plastic straws, let's stop using plastic bags and let's stop using plastic bottles, which is absolutely correct. We should stop doing it. But this isn't actually like the problem of the plastic in the ocean. Of course, it contributes to it. But it is actually the plastic straws in the ocean, which is kind of really in the media in the last few years, only accounts for like 0.03% of the plastic waste. So obviously it's still a huge amount, but it's, if you look at it in the, in the bigger picture, it isn't these plastic straws that are really like litter in the ocean as, as we know, as the media are kind of making it out to be. So there are a lot bigger plastic polluters. So you've probably already made these kind of like little switches, which would be like the um, coffee cup, the reusable bottle and like a reusable bag. And that for many people around the world that are aware of plastic issues and plastic pollution are like these kind of these three are like the swaps that everyone's made. So I'm not going to start talking about those because I'm pretty sure you guys already know about it. So there are many more important sustainable swaps to be made. And I just want to talk about like a few of the main problems that are causing plastic pollution in the ocean and how we can kind of go around helping it not get any worse. I don't know if we can help it get better, but we can help it not get any worse. (laughs) So fishing nets are one of the biggest plastic polluters in the ocean. So as you can see here, it's an estimated of 1.28 billion pounds of fishing gear goes into the ocean each year, which will account for a large amount of the plastic pollution. So you're looking at like as much as 70% of all microplastics. So when you're thinking about that 0.03% of the straws, it suddenly makes you realize like, okay, it's not the straws that I need to stop using. It's like a bigger, bigger problem. So these fishing nets, which are also called ghost fishing nets, which basically means they've been discarded by fishermen. Um, Sometimes the fishermen just throw them overboard when they don't need to use them anymore. Um, And other times they can just get lost and they kind of like tangle into like this big horrible ball, which you can kind of see that picture um, above, um, which is just awful for the ocean but also for marine animals and it is estimated that an average of 30 to 40 marine animals get caught in those nets like each net which is which is terrible um and it's a nylon plastic so obviously it's completely plastic and if it does break down it breaks down into smaller pieces and you know there's just no getting rid of these nets in the ocean 
Um, however, there are a growing number of companies who are starting to work with people who are collecting these ghost fishing nets and they are making them into sustainable like swimwear and um, footwear. Adidas is like one of the biggest ones who have come out with like a shoe um, which is all made from fishnets. Um, but someone that we can maybe relate to more is Fourth Element, which is, you know, a scuba company here in the UK who work alongside some of the charities here to use these fishing nets and create garments out of them, swimwear and things like that. So while it's not perfect because they're still made out of plastic, <laughs> at least they are made out of these discarded fishing nets, which will then be actually taken out of the ocean. Um, a lot of people ask like, well, yeah, how do we, how do that nets get taken out? How do people find these nets? While there are like support charities, um, non nonprofit organizations who are removing these fish nets from the ocean. And one that I'm familiar with here in the UK is called Ghost Fishing. Um, and that's been set up by a bunch of divers just like us um, who, you know, were seeing these net nets in the UK water and just kind of like wondering what to do with them. Um, they've also a lot of those nets get entangled in like reefs and wrecks and it is actually quite hard to remove them um, so a big team is needed and obviously funding is needed for them to do that um, but they're doing a really really great job um, they just need more funding because it's not really a charity that people are shouting about a lot of um, charities when it comes to like plastic in the ocean would be like plastic oceans um you know one of the ones like silver oh does like people know about a little bit about the bigger charities but these ghost fishing net charities a lot of people don't really know about um so what happens is when um like either a fisherman can report it or a diver can report it they'll phone ghost um fishing and then they'll be they'll get their group of divers and they're all volunteers and they'll go out and help remove it with like lift bags and, and all kind of like floats so they can kind of cut all this gear free um, take it out and then they can pass it on to somebody that can either discard a bit properly on land or can actually do something with it to make into garments um, but it's like massive degree of teamwork coordination you need to be a really great diver um, it's also really cold in the UK you need a dry suit um, so it's like not like fun fun work for these guys to be doing but they're divers and they're really dedicated so if you do have an opportunity or you need to kind of or you want to support a charity i would definitely recommend these ghost fishing charities because they are taking one of the biggest polluters of plastic out of our ocean and yeah they're not worrying about the straws <laughs> they're taking these massive massive weights <laughs> out of the ocean so they're an amazing charity to look into um, another way of, of like that we can kind of stop like more of these nets going as I said like it's it's quite hard to be like yeah well let's um, take all of the nets out of the ocean because it's not as simple as that but we can kind of stop more of it is to reduce eating fish but like when I say this I'm not saying like boycott fishermen um, you know like take away their livelihood like the the guys off of Carbo like on a one boat you know like I'm not saying that I'm just saying like understand like where you are buying your fish from if you do still want to eat fish uh, buy it sustainably because it's like as I said before it is the fishermen that unfortunately are discarded in these nets, nets and they're like broken off they no longer need them um, they also cost more to like bring them back on land and recycle them or dispose of them. So for them, it's just so much easier to chuck them in the ocean. Um, a problem with this as well is that while lots of like charities and environmental groups have like suggested ways that they could like stop this happening, discarding these nets, is like install like GPS trackers to the nets. Um, meaning that it's like linked to the boat so like the fisherman would not want to do that because he knows that he would get caught and they could get fined and stuff like that but it hasn't actually been put into place it's still just like ideas again I think it comes down to like funding like governments um, people just don't find this sort of stuff important so for people like us that really care about the ocean like to educate people on that it would be huge as well and you know, I, I can't sit here and say like you stopping eating fish is going to change this. So it's going to make a difference, but like your individual choices will make that small difference and you can continue to tell other people. So 
it's a hard one when it's like stop eating fish you know I don't eat fish I haven't done for a long time because of environmental reasons but does my one you know me as an individual make like can it get all of these nets out of the ocean no but it can help me with stuff like this to educate other people. So you never know. I definitely still recommend not eating fish if you can, or be sustainable in your choices. Um, later on, I've got an, a recommendation of an app that if you do want to eat fish, you can look into which is the most sustainable in your area to eat. Um, and then cigarettes is enough, it, another massive, massive like polluter to our ocean. So it's estimated that 4.5 trillion filters are littered each year. Um, and there's just no way they can count that. Like it's probably so much more, um, but that's just an estimated. And just one of those single like cigarette filters can kill a fish because the toxic, toxicity <laughs> levels can rise and that fish will just not survive. Um, it can also affect human health, which is another interesting one because if you are still eating fish, um, you, you know, you never really know if that fish has digested um, a cigarette filter or any of those toxins that go into it. So that's also another like good argument for eating less fish, um, giving up fish. Um, and yes, yeah, so they get eaten by the animals by mistake from food. Um, lots of different animals filter, filter feeders as well. And it has been, you know, they did a survey where they found 70% of seabirds and 30% of turtles had cigarette like traces of cigarette butts in them i think for us as scuba divers i think we can all personally have an experience of seeing somebody throw a cigarette butt overboard like maybe it wasn't recently but like i know when i used to work out in egypt it was like almost like it was just normal to like for the people on the boat to have a cigarette and throw it off board just like you would if it was if you just saw like a leaf and you just threw it and it was it's crazy and it was like nobody had ever told them that that wasn't the right thing to do so things have you know made a massive shift and a massive change recently and people do call people out more on that but I definitely still see people throwing cigarettes out their car window and throwing them on the floor I see people throw them into drains because they feel like that's getting rid of a cigarette but all that's doing is is allowing the cigarette to go into the waterways which ends up in the rivers or the oceans so to, to let people know like how kind of like toxic cigarettes are and how fish can mistake them as food and then it can go into you into your onto your plate um and that's just disgusting in itself isn't it so what can you do about smoking well don't smoke and the good thing about this is that we're not boycotting you know for small fishermen that are going off the coast with their line and catching fish we're boycotting massive multi-billionaire companies who are effectively killing people so I definitely don't have a problem with saying like don't smoke and encourage other people not to smoke it's also obviously loads of health benefits to that as well <laughs> so I think a great thing you can do is call call other people out um, I think it will happen more on your day-to-day -day life of when people are along the street um, or if it's like your friend and they just throw it away you can just say like oh do you know what happens and, like where's that cigarette going um, so that's a massive polluter of the ocean. So while it's not like single use plastic, it's still like these simple ways that you can kind of make a difference to people in your community or around you. Um, and then, yeah, now I want to get onto these the great sustainable swaps, like to help reduce single use plastic. And, and many of them maybe you don't know of, as, as we said before, like there's all of the kind of big ones that we're told a lot about, but um, through the research of creating a waste free world, um, I've discovered basically how much everything around us has plastic in. Um, some of it you can't avoid, but some of it you can. Um, it's just nice to find like simple, sustainable swaps. So one of my favourite ones at the moment, I think I only discovered this like six months ago. It's quite obvious if you think about it. It's like elastics, hairbands. Um, that we any diver or anyone that's going swimming in the ocean who has long hair that uses them I mean like how many of you lost come on like when you jump off the boat and then like suddenly your hair's everywhere and you're just like oh god like I've lost my hair back <laughs> and then as annoying as it is like the only thing we would think before is like oh my god that's so annoying my hair's gonna get everywhere but actually when you think about it all of the kind of like things all of the mixed materials that are in there is all synthetic materials and they're not recyclable 
Um, I mean, who knows, maybe their mistake is food as well, but the small little elastic non biodegradable things that just will end up in that ocean. So I was looking everywhere before this talk to try and find some kind of fact of like how many hair bands, bobbles, whatever we call them, that we lose every day. But there's, there isn't one <laughs> because I'm sure that nobody has bothered to uh, look into that. But I mean, I know me, I'm sure you guys, like you can walk along the street and you can find a hair band. Like somebody is losing hair bands almost like every second of the day. And as divers, it's just inevitable that you will lose hair bands. So one of my favorite plastic free swaps um, are these new 100% uh, fair trade plastic free hair bands and scrunchies. And they're the first um, of its kind to be completely 100% plastic free and fair trade. Um, and they're biodegradable when you do lose them. So if you do lose them, it's obviously not great, but you can kind of like feel a little bit better that at least it is going to biodegrade. Um, rather than just completely litter the ocean. So I'm wearing my one now, actually. You can see that they're, they're really, really great as well because they are like, they're thicker and they just stick to your hair better. So I've had, yeah, maybe like a year now I've been using them. I've never lost one. So <laughs> the good thing is, is they're designed not to lose as well. Um, they are a little bit more expensive than normal hair bands. So you have to really care. You have to really want to make a difference to start using, buying these sustainable swaps. But the, as I said, like mine has lasted for so long. I have never lost one. So when you think of it over time, like you're definitely investing in your, in your hair and the ocean as well. So yeah, I love those. They're all available at Waste Free World. Um, tea bags is another funny one that a lot of people don't realize, but they contain plastic. So there's been loads and loads of studies on tea bags recently where they've kind of like dissolved it. And then it's left with like this skeleton, like very thin layer of plastic. But they pretty much like every single brand of tea bag has that like thin, thin layer of plastic around it. And that plastic is obviously plastic. It's non-biodegradable. Um, all it will do is just break down. So it's kind of like a bit of controversy because a lot of people have been putting their tea bags into like compost, you know, with the rest of their like compost food, but it's actually never ever breaks down. Um, so there will be big companies like, I don't know about where you guys live, but us is like PG Tips, Yorkshire Tea, like all of the massive, massive tea bag brands, they all contain plastic. And the problem is with the plastic as well is that it releases these like tiny, 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 tiny microplastics um, as you're drinking your tea. So the longer your tea bag's in there, they're like tiny little bits are actually being released and then we're obviously drinking it. So it's like nanoplastic particles. Um, as you can see there, it's like a crazy amount of like nanoplastic particles that go into a single cup of tea. So um, a great plastic free spot for those have been these um, like cotton reusable um, tea bags, which you use with loose leaf tea. Um, so you have to actually buy the tea in, in the loose leaf, like not in the bag, obviously. Um, a lot of places actually do those in like refill shops now, but you can still buy them in supermarkets. They actually turn out cheaper sometimes as well. You just pop them in that bag, use the bag like a normal tea bag, and then you just wash it with your normal clothes and, or you can just hand wash it. So they're really brilliant. You can buy, like we have a pack of three. Um, I, th I feel like they're like four pounds or something and you can just keep using them and using them and using them. And you know, you never have to throw them away. Um, so that's like a very interesting plastic free swap. Um, another great one, it's just kind of coming a little bit more mainstream if you're into plastic free, <laughs> are wax wraps. Um, so these are alternatives to like plastic clim film, um, plastic like food wraps, um, which is basically sheets of single use um, plastic, which just can never be recycled and will just break down and can get wrapped in marine life. And it's just horrible stuff. <laughs> it doesn't even let your food like breathe or anything like that. So these are like organic cotton solutions to food wraps. Um, so we have ones which are beeswax, made out of beeswax, and we also have vegan ones which are made out of soy wax. So obviously it's completely vegan as well. Um, and they're completely compostable, they're breathable, they make your food last so much longer. Like I have a bread one and I just put the bread straight into it and it honestly makes it last like five days longer than it would if you just put it in a normal bag or anything. Um, and you just wash them. 
So you wrap anything you can see on the screen. They've got sandwiches, cakes, salads, cheese. You wrap anything in it. Once you're finished with it, you uh, wash it with um, cold water and then you just keep reusing it. And like eventually the wax kind of like slowly breaks off over time, uh, maybe like a few years, but you can um, just like shave more wax onto it. You just buy wax and melt it and then you can kind of keep reusing them. And they're all just made out of organic cotton anyway. So they are a really, really great swap. Um, this is my last swap because I don't want to talk forever. <laughs> but this is like such a great one because reusable razors are like, I mean, this horrible, like, like oh, they really get to me, these horrible, like single use plastic razors, um, which you buy in like a pack of four for like $5. And then you're supposed to like use them like however many times and then just throw them away and use the next one, use the next one. And they're like crappy razors. I also have a massive problem with like the pink tax that they put on it. Like they make it pink. So it's for like women and then they just charge more money for it. And so it's just, ridiculous so everything about um plastic single-use razors and the big companies that run them is not great <laughs> with these reusable razors you literally buy one and you have it for the rest of your life um you change the blades so you just buy um blades with them so the blades are like non-reusable because of course you just once the blade is um finished you have to discard of it but they're fully recyclable the blades and that the actual base of the razor you just buy once and use it forever it's 20 pounds uh, it doesn't make any difference what color it is um it's completely unisex and that's it 20 pounds for the rest of your life you have got these razors the little um blades that you buy as refills are like a couple of dollars um and they're a better shave and you're literally just getting rid of all of this horrible single use that you would have used before. So it's such a great easy swap. It's a great gift as well. It's like one of those things that are super easy to buy for anybody, just to like encourage them on their journey <laughs> to more sustainability. So yeah, I've just gone through a couple of the swaps, but some great resources, which I've mentioned a few of them before, is the Ghost Fishing um, UK, but they also have Ghost Fishing in other countries as well. Um, obviously Project Aware who um, help kind of distributing all of this information. Um, Fourth Element, which I spoke to you about, um, they're creating their, um, some of their swimwear out of ghost fishing nets. They've also just created um, one of the first ever wetsuits, which is made from a plant-based material. Um, the Marine Conservation Society is um, a resource which has an app um, which is called the Great Fishing Guide and or the Good Fishing Guide and that app will actually show you what fish if you do want to eat fish which is like the right fish to eat so it will just tell you whether it's endangered like critically endangered sustainable or anything like that so um, it really helps like if you are going to buy fish and you think like you want a white fish um, there's not really much difference in taste with a lot of the white fish um, in here here in the UK, like cod is, is, everyone thinks like, oh, cod is like fish and chips, you know, but um, cod isn't actually sustainable. Um, you know, there's mass overfishing because everyone wants their fish and chips, but there will be like a, a different option, which will taste like exactly the same. So you can go on the app and you can take a look at like what fish um, it is good to eat um, and what fish you should absolutely avoid. Um, and then at Away Through World, we also have like a closed Facebook group where we share all this, like all of this information, all of these projects um, and stuff like that. So you can join the group. Um, and then as you can see, there's only 5,000 members in there. And we just share resources really on um, plastic free products, um, you know, events, everything like that. Um, so yeah, that's just some really great resources. I've got them on a, I've written them all down as well. So I'll just share them in this box at the end. Um, and then, yeah, so a waste free world is my plastic free shop. Um, I do it all myself. <laughs> I like pack everything myself from, I have like a place downstairs. I pack it all. I pack it all plastic free. I send it all and we ship worldwide. Um, the only problem is like Mexico is kind of a bad, <laughs> bad postal system. <laughs> if you know you have a bad postal system, I would recommend not buying. Um, also on that fact, like we do ship worldwide because we get that option with Royal Mail in the UK. But I would honestly recommend you trying to find places which are more local to you and um, that you can because, you know, like if you are in Mexico and you're trying to buy from a way through world, 
like we're shipping that from the UK, which is not very sustainable. Like we want to give people these options. And I always say like, if you can find more of a local option, if you have somewhere around you that does that, then go and buy from them. But like, if you really can't find anywhere, but you want to make those swaps, then we can ship um, worldwide. But like, you know, it's not good for carbon footprint. Um, and we have a YouTube channel, which um, we do like little reviews of like, we have like plastic free cleaning products and um, period products, just like every kind of like products that we do a lot of reviews so you can hear more about them. And then on the Instagram as well, we like share and repost other people's um, resources and just share loads of information about recycling, waste, like the ocean, plastic and everything in between. So yeah, that, that's it because I don't want to go on forever. But if you do have any questions, you can definitely ask me now or anyone that's tuning in later. Um, you can contact me on like Girls at Scuba or Waste Free World any way you want. Uh, I'm more than happy to like talk about things. I definitely don't know everything. Um, I'm not like, I didn't go to university or anything for this. So <laughs> I haven't got like certifications. It's just something that I like dedicate a lot of my time to learning just so I can be better myself and then I can share it with other people. Um, so I'm definitely open to like feedback and everything like that. Yeah.